the rise in metal and steel prices could affect Tesla Cybertruck's price ahead of its launch. The prices of steel have been going up over the last several months sharply and the Tesla Cybertruck is going to be built with a strong steel frame, right? This increase in steel prices could raise the price of the Cybertruck ahead of its launch. Welcome back dear friends, this is Armin Harayan from TorqueNews.com. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel and share in social media if you find it informative. Also, please follow us on Twitter to stay in touch for daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. The graph shown under the tweet below from Torque News gives an idea of just how rapidly steel prices have been increasing. This uh, chart documents the last year of steel prices, which spans roughly from April 2020 to April 2021. The price of steel went up steadily from April 2020 to November 2020. Then in November of 2020, prices started to skyrocket. They have remained on a steep upward trajectory since November 2020 and they are still climbing. So the, there, this has been steel price increase could be an issue for Tesla. Well, before I continue, I would like to ask you, what do you think about this, friends? Uh, if you would like to comment on this, if you think the price increase uh, of steel can be an issue for Tesla and Cybertruck in terms of its own price. There has been a BV of price increases to the Tesla Model 3 and other Tesla models over the past several months. It seems that the Model 3's price is being raised in $500 increments quite often. I think only this year we saw Model uh, Tesla updating uh, Model 3 prices, I think five times. The Model 3 is Tesla's best-selling car and Tesla delivered a record number of Model 3s in the first quarter. On the other hand, the Cybertruck is a specialty vehicle. The Cybertruck will start at approximately $39,900. The dual motor all-wheel drive model will start at around $49,900 and the tri-motor all-wheel drive Cybertruck will start at about $69,900. New cars that come out often have their prices marked up. Tesla also has a lot of opinions you can add with uh, which case, um, actually Tesla also has a lot of options you can add which cost um, in thousands of dollars each in many cases. If that is coupled with a price increase in steel, we could be talking about some price figures that would be astronomical for a Cybertruck. Well, not really astronomical, but if the, if look, I mean, look at that chart that I shared with you about the uh, steel price increase. Now, I'm going to tell you what people think of this increase in steel prices. There have been some fairly nuanced takes uh, pertaining to the increase in the price of steel and how it will affect the price of the Cybertruck. It is reasonable to assume that increases in the price of steel will lead to increases in the price of Cybertruck, say some people, and some tweets express that the price increase in steel were not so big of a deal. If you don't think or think so, please let me know in the comments section. The argument laid out here is that steel and batteries don't even make up half of what is uh, what it costs to bring a cyber truck to market. Well, for example, here is a quote: "Steel is definitely an important cost of cyber truck. So are batteries, but those combined aren't even half the variable cost of sales of a cyber truck." I expect we'll continue. We'll continue to see little price adjustments from Tesla over time, uh, the same as we do with other auto manufacturers, writes a Tesla owner, James Stephenson, in reply to Torque News. However, Stephenson also thinks that Tesla's margins will ultimately be superior because Tesla will be able to charge a huge premium for software that no other manufacturer will uh, even be able to offer a close facsimile of. Now, the tweet then ended with a statement a statement on how few price increases are expected to be seen over time. This tweet could turn out to be correct, but right now there are too many variables. He says the price of steel could plateau or even decrease at some point, but it's not doing that right now. Another thing to take into account is that Tesla needs to buy steel for the Cybertruck now. Prices are sky high as of April 2021. Tesla will have to invest more money into 
little steel than they otherwise would have if prices were lower. This could affect the company's bottom line by forcing them to raise the price on the Cybertruck. These price increases will hopefully not be too big. Here's a quote, another quote, friends. Uh, Cars use highly specialized cold rolled steel seat, which is a much uh, higher value added steel product with a higher price. Its price fluctuations are much smaller and it is all made to order and sold under long term supply contracts, writes a Twitter electric vehicle expert, JPR007. He says Cybertruck uses an even more specialized and much higher value added stainless steel product with a higher cost, which we understand Tesla makes or has made to their own recipe and specifications and would therefore not not typically even have a market price. So what is the future of the Cybertruck? It is somewhat unclear, says Talk News uh, uh, Tesla reporter Daniel Capo, how well the Cybertruck will do when it comes to market. It is a revolutionary truck. There have been some articles here at Talk News that have been documenting the capabilities of Cybertruck. One thing that the Cybertruck can do is power a luxury camper. The Cyberlander has been branded as the camper to go with the Cybertruck. So I think it's going to do really well. The Cybertruck could become a difference maker in the Tesla lineup if it really catches on. And I think it has already a lot of orders. So the Cybertruck likely won't be uh, I think it will be actually a really great seller and the luxury pickups have risen in popularity over the past several years. Many buyers enjoy the comfort and practicality of a pickup truck. They aren't necessarily buying trucks anymore just to how a 20 foot trailer, just to tow a 20 foot trailer. The Cybertruck will be a commuter car in addition to being an asset on the, uh, on the campsite. So what do you think friends? Do you think the price increase in still will cause issue in the rollout of the Cybertruck? Let us know in the comments and continue in the discussion below. Tesla and its peers are proving that electric vehicles are inherently safer than combustion cars. Simon Alvarez has some details from Tesla Radi saying an analysis of insurance data in the United States has shown that injury claims are notably less common among all electric vehicles like the Tesla Model 3 and its peers. The findings were shared by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety IIHS, in a recent report which which followed the release of its safety ratings for the 2021 Volvo XC40 recharge and the Ford Mustang mach -E. Well, the Ford Mustang mach -E doesn't still have much data because it's a newer car, but still the findings are very interesting. Do you, uh, friends, feel the same way about the safety of electric cars? If yes, why do you think that way? For example, when it comes to Tesla, I think the FSD is safer, autopilot, despite all its um, issues that have been in the media, I think uh, it, it has some very good points. And and but what, what do you think about, um, in what ways do you feel more safer in Tesla? I think I would feel very safe in the Cybertruck because Cybertruck is going to be made a lot with a, using a lot of steel. So, but you know, so when it comes to the XC4, the recharge and the Mustang Mike, they were able to secure high rankings in the IIHS uh, stringent safety test with the former receiving a top safety peak plus award and the latter receiving a lower but still impressive top safety peak rating. Other all-electric vehicles, most notably the Tesla Model 3, the Audi e-tron and the Audi e-tron Sportback have qualified for the 2021 Top Safety Peak Plus Award. Um, Alvarez also says that interestingly enough, the release of the uh, XC40 Recharge and the Mach-E stay, rating, uh, stay ratings coincided with the recent study of insurance losses for electric vehicles by the IIHS, IIHS's affiliated at Highway Loss Data Institute. The study looked uh, at electric and conventional versions of nine vehicles produced from 2011 to 2019, and it examined collision property damage liability and injury claims. As per the study's findings, the rates of injury claims related to drivers and passengers of electric vehicles were over 40% lower compared
compared to their internal combustion powered counterparts over 2011-2019. The IIHS notes that these results were quite similar to the findings of an earlier study from the Highway Loss Data in Data Institute, known as LD, uh, HLDI, that focused on hybrid cars, which pointed out that the lower injury rates um, may be due to the weight of the vehicle's batteries. You know, electric vehicles are generally a little bit heavier because of the weight of the vehicle's batteries. So I think this makes really good point, doesn't it? Um, as per the HLDI, the large batteries used in hybrids make vehicles substantially heavier than conventional cars. Occupants of heavier vehicles are exposed to lower forces in multi-vehicle crashes. Uh, Matt Moore, L uh, HLDI vice president, explained these findings in a statement saying, weight is a big factor. Hybrids on average are 10% heavier than their standard counterparts. Uh, this extra mass gives them an advantage in crashes that their conventional twins don't have, he said. Uh, well, when I'm um, looking at this data, I'm thinking I wish uh, the despite the uh, battery advancements, uh, the vehicles, electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles always stay heavier like this because they give their um, passengers and the driver extra security. This weight advantage is even more notable, says Sivan Almares, in all electric cars like the Tesla Model 3 on account of their sustainability, uh, uh, substantially larger battery packs. This was true for the XC40 Recharge, which features a curve weight of 4,787 pounds, which is significantly heavier than the 3,811 pounds of its combustion-powered counterpart. Even the Mach-E, which is an all-electric model, is quite hefty at 4,516 pounds. IIHS President David Harkey is quite optimistic about the study's findings. In a statement, he notes that the study further proves that all electric cars are as safe or even safer than conventional vehicles. This means that a transition to sustainable vehicles would like the, likely not require as many compromises on the part of customers. It's fantastic to see more proof that these vehicles are as safe as or safer than gasoline and diesel powered cars. We can now say with confidence that making the US fleet more environmentally friendly doesn't require any compromises in terms of safety, he said. Well, I like this very much, friends, that the heavy cars are safer and safer, and this is going to add more to Tesla and other electric vehicles makers in terms of people looking at this. Um, for example, I'm a father of three children. My uh, older son is 18 years old, and I'm considering a, a, a car for him, and I'm definitely thinking an electric vehicle for him because of this one additional thing because it's safer in addition to other benefits that i've talked about before well let me know what your thoughts are about uh, tesla and electric vehicle safeties in terms of higher weight um, and uh, we'll see the discussions in the comment section and participate Thanks for watching, dear friends. Please give us thumbs up if you found this report informative. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss my next news coverage. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below. And also, please follow us on Twitter for daily Tesla and EV breaking tweets. Have a great day. God bless you, everyone. And peace be with all of you.